my concerns are a little different I, and a little broader. I, I always like to make something positive out of a negative experience. Uh, I'd like us to look into a couple of things. The first thing is these charts are amazing. Uh, and I'm on one of the pension boards myself. And could we, where would we get information on how much all this is costing us? I mean, I, each pension board has a complete staff of, of professionals. Um, we pay for someone to watch someone else do it. And I, I mean, I'm not saying we don't need to do that, but I would really like us to take a look at the funding we're doing. Uh, the administrative cost, uh, and I'd like to take a look at our administrative cost per pension. And then I'd like to do some benchmarking. What are other people? Is anyone getting a better deal on it? Because in the end, uh, given the state of our pensions, uh, it's the taxpayers that are paying for it. And I'd like to see just what the administrative overhead is, because just sitting there uh, voting on payments uh, pains me on some. I, I, you know, sometimes I think our pension systems are little, a little empire. You know, not empires. What's the word I'm looking for? They're they're, they're enterprises, and uh, and they're quite expensive to run. So I, I would like to take a look at it. That's one thing I would like us to look at. The second thing I'd like us to look at is the return rate on our investments. Um, I was looking at the different pension plans, and I was shocked by the differences. And, and maybe I was misinterpreting because I was just looking at them uh, briefly one evening when I was looking at the different pension. The returns on investments in the same year between the pensions programs, the three we run, is amazing. And I would like to see that and maybe some benchmarking on how that does because we do have at least two votes on each of the pension boards um, and maybe a half of another vote. Um, I would like to see us begin to, to monitor that, given that it's turned into major dollars. I mean, we're cutting out, weeding our peanut plants, uh, but God knows what we're paying for uh, managing our accounts, and I, I, and they both come out of the same pocket. Okay, that's that's what I just wanted to say. And Ken, is how would we go about getting that type of information? We can request it. Okay. And open transparency, I mean, and it's something we always do, is that all fees are disclosed um, in the actuarial report, all fees are disclosed, mm -hmm. and then in, from a reporting performance standpoint, uh, there is an investment policy that is in place with the Fire Pension Board that indicates what the benchmarks will be, what each manager needs to be benchmarked against, and what type of returns they need to have in, in regards to those benchmarks. So that's definitely happening today. Well, there's some legislative changes that are being contemplated in Tallahassee, too, which may change some of those relationships and how they have to report to city council. So, uh, you know, in the closing days of the legislature, we may find out exactly what that's going to look like, and it may be entirely different than what we're doing currently, because as it is right now, the pension boards do not have to submit anything to the city council for review. And uh, some of the changes that are now contemplated in Tallahassee would be that they would be required to submit uh, that transparency that she is talking about to the council would not be for your approval, but be for your information. And so that is, you know, uh, if that piece of legislation is actually passed uh, in Tallahassee, you will see an entirely different set of reporting coming to council beginning October 1. Okay. Done. And I kind of uh, referred to it being a symptom of the bigger problem. And uh, it doesn't, I know we have five people on that pension board and we control directly two of them. All five of those people, no matter who puts them there, do have incentive to make sure that it's a well-run pension. We most, most certainly from our side of it, that we're getting value for our dollar from the employee side of it that that pension fund will be there and be strong when they need it but I think when each of these uh, appointments comes up we also need to take a look and question not just motivation but the competency and experience and the gifts that the people that we're appointing bring to those boards because they're 
very undervalued but very important positions. And it, not being the the answer, but it is one piece of the puzzle that we need to take a look at very, very seriously when the time comes. Okay. Um, I, I can just speak for the members that I know on the, on the fire pension and we seem to have some pretty competent people running that. Then um, one of them works for uh, Edward Edward Jones, mm -hmm. um, so he's very astute in uh, finance uh, and uh, and pension issues. Frank is of course extremely well versed in what we're doing. So I think the people that we have on board are do a pretty good job, from what I see, at least speaking from the fire side. Yeah, uh, I sit on the police, and uh, I, I, I too think that that the accounting is is overall uh, well done. Uh, we do, as you mentioned, get each quarter an accounting from, in our case, Chad Little, uh, and uh, and the uh, investment folks. Uh, perhaps. We need to bring those uh, those reports directly here instead of just uh, overviews. Uh, we need to actually bring the, the, the physical report and, and turn that in as part of our council uh, comments. And I think that's uh, uh, it, instead of just a, a glittering overview that, that we we tend to give. Let's let's bring those in. Uh, they're hard figures. They're given to us in in public. Uh, and there's no reason that they can't be turned to the council. Okay. Additional comments, council? I know Jim Reardon is uh, uh, big time with Edward Jones, and I appreciate him there. Um, we've got five people on the uh, fire pension board. One of those is actually the plan administrator. Mm -hmm. That's so a not permanent, a voting not a voting member. So we've only got four voting members, is that right? There's actually five. There's five. <clears throat> there are two firefighters. Uh, two city appointees and a fifth member that is chosen uh, by between the two and submitted to the city council. Okay, I was just saying I only saw four on that list. That's could, why I was asking. Could could we make a policy that the city doesn't appoint anyone that's a member of that pension to the board? And that's up to the to the council board. That's the they can. Uh, Nominate who they want to, but then it's here. The city would not to. vote. The city representatives not vote. Here's the problem: whether it is a conflict or interest or not, if you're a part of that pension, it's not going to look good to the citizens. Pass the snow <clears throat> test. Yeah, uh, it just it just doesn't look right, mm. and and you know, and I have no problem, by the way, with pension boards because, especially as we move in the future with the employees giving a portion of their salary, a reasonable portion of their salary, uh, to the pension. They certainly have a right to have a voice in it. But also the taxpayers have a right to have a voice in it as well. And probably, given that we're paying, the taxpayers are paying the lion's share, a bigger voice. So I, I would like us as a, as a board to consider in the future not appointing people who, uh, who participate in that specific pension uh, to the committee, if we can. I yes. think the appointee in that, and Frank is even, he was our, he was our appointment, but his background, he spent many, many years in prison. That's what I was going to say, you know, Frank is that third person or that in-between person. Mm -hmm. and how long, how much experience, Frank, if you want, if you don't mind coming up, Frank, how many years have you been running or helping run the Police. City, I was right at 30, but I put about 25 on the pension board. He was chairman of the pension as a, as a the knowledge that Frank brings. Is Everything's governed by the state. Right. Mm -hmm. The members and who gets appointed, who doesn't. So as far as you'd have to change that at state level to have the board not, you know, nominate me. It wouldn't be a city issue. Okay. But Anything else? Anyone else? Thank you for being here. Uh, you understand